Greetings, friends. My name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a very old and important theorem called the binomial theorem, and I'm going to explain it in a way that even the most silly of people can understand it. Well, I'm assuming you have at least a high school education in mathematics. So, let's begin. Now, we know that most mathematics professors and teachers do not understand the binomial theorem that well. Um, I'd say that the ones who do have a better understanding are the mathematical statistics professors, <clears throat> but they they tend to muddle it up with counting theory. <clears throat> and uh, counting theory is far more complex, and there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, coefficients in a binomial expansion and counting theory. So, in this article, I'll help you understand how we arrive at the relationship of combinations and the coefficients of terms in a binomial. And once again, there is no one-to-one -one correspondence, uh, simple one-to-one -one correspondence, as you might expect. So, stated, I'm going to use the example of a trinomial, which is a plus b to the, to the power of 3, or a plus b cubed. And what that means is a plus b multiplied by itself once and twice. So it means a plus b multiplied by itself twice. Now, uh, to understand this, you have to replace these, these uh, letters with unique letters, different letters, P, Q, R, S, T, and U. And the reason I do that is due to the fact that when you expand a binomial, what you're doing is you're permuting each of these terms. In other words, you're permuting A with these two terms and with these two terms. That's all you're doing, and you're creating a tree. Okay, so if you're using this uh, expression here of three trinomials, this is the tree you'll get. And to see what the difference is when you have a plus b, you can replace each of these with the corresponding letters in each trinomial. Okay, so the reason I, I use different letters is that this is simply a permutation where the order matters, okay? So, in, in, in permutations, unlike combinations, the order of the terms or the items uh, selected matters, okay? So, um, we can obtain the permutation of these eight terms by simply replacing the different letters, as I said early on, with those of each binomial as shown on the tree diagram in the left. Now, notice that if order is dismissed, in other words, if we have these A terms here, and if we dismiss the order of these uh, uh, terms, then some of the permutations in here are the same. In other words, they are combinations. And also notice that the combinations are a reflection of each other in both of the binomial terms. Okay, so let's see how this looks in the ne in the next slide. So, for example, when we say that this is the combination of three things taken zero zero at a time, we're looking at these three letters chosen one, like that and zero following it. There's nothing else to add there. Okay, it's just that term by itself. So there's only one such combination. Then we look at the combination of three things taken one at a time. And in this case, we look at the B, which is taken one at a time, and we simply place it in each of the slots. So we first place the B in the first slot, followed by the other two, and it doesn't matter what order they appear. The B in the second slot, and the B in the third slot, and it doesn't matter how the others appear. Okay, And this will give us three combinations. Now we do the same thing with the combination of three things taken two at a time. Now in this case, we take the Bs first, two at a time, and just put them in each of the slots, okay? So 
Um, so we put the bees in the first slot here, then we separate them like that, and then like that, and then we've actually taken care of, I'm sorry, we put them in this slot, and then like that, and like that, and we've taken care of all the ways that we can put the bees in these three slots, and we simply add in the A. But now, this here is um, a combination of three things taken two at a time. Now, if we if we turn this thing around and uh, select A first, it turns out that it's just a reflection of the combination of three things taken one at a time. And this is true of all binomials, okay? So that ultimately, what you have is that the permutation of three things taken 0, 1, 2, and 3 at a time is 1, 3, 6, 6, and the combination is 1, 3, 3, 1. As you can notice, there is a reflection. Sometimes there is a middle term there, which is not, uh, which is unique, which is not the same as those on either sides of it, which are a reflection. So that's pretty much it. And now the next uh, question is asked by students, and it's really a redundant question, is how does a theorem apply to rational exponents? Well, isn't n a rational number? It is. n is a rational number uh, whose consequent part is the unit. Okay, so n is a multiple of the unit, so it's a rational number. And of course, uh, there are no num other numbers besi besides the rational numbers. In the mainstream, you tend to learn number theory completely wrong. You first learn of integer, uh, whole numbers and integers. That's nonsense. You start off with rational numbers. And if you look at the details section, you'll, you'll see how a genius discovers the concept of number. Okay, And note that a plus b to the power of p plus q is the same as the qth root of a plus b to the p. So that you can, for example, say that the square root of a plus b is equal to the product of these two binomials, which is equal to this, of course. And there are many ways, infinitely or innumerably many ways, to write, I hate the word infinite, to write this, uh, uh, these, these linear combinations, okay? So uh, the important thing to note is that these linear combinations of fractions form a sum of the exponent, whatever it is, in this case a half. And it can be easily concluded that expanding a binomial can be done in exactly the same way as for a rational number exponent that is a multiple of 1, as we see over here. So you, if you can expand that, um, then uh, the same uh, principle will apply if it happens to be another rational number, in this case, 1 quarter. Um, and in fact, I think I wrote this wrong. That shouldn't be a 4 there. That should be a 2. Okay, so that <laughs> that's not a 4 there, that's a 2. All right, never mind. Um, and this, my friends, is the binomial theorem explained for dummies. Uh, be sure to become a subscriber to my channel, download my free ebook, and learn mathematics the right way. I'm John Gabriel. This is New Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.